welcome to the first ever Word of Life traditional school presidential debate. We have six candidates today. They're all fighting to become the next president of the United States. Our six candidates come from five different countries, including Mexico, Colombia, Vietnam, China, and the United States of America. I ask that you please be respectful in the audience as they come and that their, them and their teams have worked very hard on this campaign. Feel free, like I said, to stand and applaud for anything you strongly agree with. Okay, now to introduce, starting on my left, we have a senior, born and raised in the United States of America, Titus Quest. <laughs> to his left, another senior from Colombia, please welcome Alejandro Hurtado. Sorry for the pronunciation there, that was incredible. Next is a senior from the country of China. Please welcome Alex Yi. Also from China, she's a junior. Give it up for Ivy Liang. Next, all the way from Vietnam, please welcome the senior. Finally, please welcome a senior from Mexico, Luis Garcia. Okay, so the debate this afternoon will involve each candidate answering several questions, responding to other candidates' remarks, and finally leaving us with a short speech on why you should choose them as the next president of the United States. Okay, you guys ready? Kind of? All right. First question goes to Titus. Titus, you recently said that if you become the next president, your first order of business will be to repeal Obamacare. What is it about Obamacare that you don't like? Our nation was founded on the Declaration of Independence. Freedom of choice and free market are the core of our nation's uh, soul. If the government can make people, force people that just live in America, to buy a product, no matter who they are, then um, what else can they do? Where, like, where do we draw the line? Um, also, it'll create 800,000 fewer jobs in the U.S. based on the Congressional Budget Office. office. And, um, yeah. Very good, thank you. All right. Next question goes to Ali. You said that maybe the biggest problem we face today in America is the economy. With unemployment numbers reaching record highs over the last several years, and more people on food stamps than ever before, what is your plan to overcome this? Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, as I said before, the unemployment rate is the biggest, one of the biggest problems in America. So that means that a lot of people, they're not supporting their family with money, and uh, also, they're not making products to import or to export to other countries. So, I wanted to work with this kind of class. It's a lower class, a poor class. So, at the beginning, we just want to uh, look at statistics, and in the worst sectors, we're going to work in, in that part. Uh, we want to create classes to that uh, lower class. It's going to be handicraft or to cook or something that you can make with your hands, carpentry. And also we're gonna we're gonna make classes for that people, but basic education like math, uh, science, English, um, so they can know a little bit of that subject. We don't want to just create jobs. We want to, we want to give them the tools so the people who make the jobs. Uh, we don't want to just give money free to those people. We just want to help them. If they have new, idea, new ideas, they, they want to create those jobs, we're going to help them invest in, in them. And they will pay back like uh, within three years. Okay. Thank you. Alex, your plan upon becoming the next president is to offer free health care to any families making less than $50,000. Why do you think that would be beneficial? Uh, well, uh, the reasons for our is for us to provide the 
free health care to the family, which make less than fifty thousand dollars. It's because those families really need us, need us help. And a family makes up about fifty thousand dollars per year. Uh, we call uh, in uh, in our country we call it uh, kind of middle in the middle class, uh, which means they can uh, they they have ability to afford all uh, all kinds of things that kind of necessary. Uh, for example, they can pay for their um, medical bills, they can pay for their kids' educations, etc. And but for those who uh, those family which make less than fifty thousand dollars per year, they uh, uh, they can they can just make things all things perfectly. Um, for example, they may can't afford the tuition for the college. They they may can't pay some tickets for the end of the month. Thank you, Alex. I'm gonna have to cut you off right there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, you were recently quoted as saying that increasing our border security is an important step in America's ability to remain the strongest country in the world. What did you mean by that? Okay, I think uh, a country's position, if, um, if it's important, it means it has a strong economy. Because if a country is wealthy, so it has, it's kind of like uh, it has the power in this world so that you can improve the position. Um, so I think, as we can see, we have more and more immigrants coming into this country, especially on a, it's hard to get, get a legal immigration, so they just want to get into this country illegally, which is bad for our country, because uh, if they come here, then uh, they work here illegally, they work uh, for themselves or they earn money, but they are taking our opportunities to get jobs. So it's like, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's dam it damaged our economy. And, and uh, the important thing is to strengthen our uh, forces at the borders of the United States of America so that um, we can keep out those people illegally uh, coming to this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anna, on your first day in office, you plan to challenge the existing abortion laws. What do you think the law should be? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This 50% maternal death resulted from abortion. So I, I think abortion is illegal. Uh, except the following case. First, if pregnancy is then, uh, damaged to the mother health or the mother have disease that uh, may infect the baby. The second thing is uh, if the mother have uh, disorder, met disorder uh, prior or during pregnancy. And the third thing is, um, Pregnancy caused by rape of minors under 15, and that have, have been examined by the doctor. <coughs> and uh, private clients that who, who help the people have illegal abortion will have to pay fine for $200,000 if the mother is alive. And if the mother is uh, dead, uh, the doctor has to go to jail for 20 years. And if the mother want to have abortion because uh, her low income, our government will support her money to uh, uh, grow the child, and she has to make sure that she will work to pay back to government uh, within three years. So that's my idea. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Luis, if you become the next president, you plan to create a flat tax of 15% for all American citizens. Why do you think that will boost our economy? Because, uh, that's kind of love. Yeah, because in America, everybody wants to have like a fair kind of life. So, one of my main things that the people is against me is because they think that if I raise a little bit the taxes, so like in a common to everybody, they think that the people that are struggling right now, they will have like 
they will have more problems. But right now, the minimum percentage that the people is paying, it's 10%. So I'm going to raise only like 5% to that, that people that is struggling and the people that is in like in the higher position, like rich people, they are paying like sometimes more than 40%. So that, uh, if, I, if we got a flat tax to everybody, this is not only going to be fair to everybody, we're going to have like the, the government will need less money. We not, I will also like eliminate the welfare programs. Like if the people is not working, the, the government is not going to give money to them anymore. We are going to like make more jobs to them. Thank you, Luis. Also, if they say anything in the middle of their speech that you agree with, you can feel free to clap as well. That's just something. And remember, don't talk while they're, while they're speaking, okay? All right, next question is for Titus. Back to Titus. You said in a speech last week that you don't agree with excessive taxation, but that, and I quote, an appropriate high-end tax is necessary. What did you mean by a high-end tax is necessary? I meant that richer should pay, people who have more money should pay a higher tax than the not so wealthy. Um, Warren Buffett recently stated, I have worked with investors for 60 years and have yet to say, see anyone shy away from a sensible investment because of a tax rate on a potential gain. Not even when capital gain rates were 39.9% in 1976 to 77. Federal income tax is only a small part of the burden on the middle class. Based on data from the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, the total of all state and local taxes consumes 21% of the middle class's um, money, and in the 1% of the high end, high money makers, it only consumes 7%. Um, the very rich um, benefit more from national, national security, government-funded research, infrastructure, and property laws. Defending the country and giving it money benefits them more because they have more to defend and more to invest in. Thank you. Okay, real quick, back to Luis. Titus said something about how he, would, he does not agree with the flat tax. He thinks that the people that are making more should be paying more taxes. I'll give you a chance to respond to that. Yeah, I mean, that, that is not fair. For the people that is like working, they are, they are like making a bigger effort to be, be successful. And the people that is like, it's not fair to the people in the high position, they're going to pay for the people of the low position. Thank you. Okay, next question is for Ali. You agreed with Alex on his stance that everyone deserves health care that cannot afford it. So where do you think the money should come from to support that? Okay, um, I agree with one part of Alex's bill. Um, I think that people who can't afford uh, health care will give uh, government support. Um, I think we should reduce military spending and we're gonna spend that in, in that lower class. But also, I think it's not gonna be free healthcare because we don't have enough money to do that. Uh, I think we're gonna, um, the lower class should pay a little amount every six months. And in, in that way, they can receive uh, healthcare. Thank you, Alex. But also, I want to ask uh, Alex, uh, where do you think the money uh, should come from? Oh, well, uh, as I said before, uh, our country is the most powerful country in the world, and uh, we have we spend about six trillion dollars uh, on military expenses, or about forty-three percent of the world's total. So that's a very large amount of money. And I don't think we still need to uh, take that kind of large amount of expenses. And how uh, we may withdraw our troops from the Iraq or the uh, Afghanistan. And we can just cut down the expenses from uh, the military. Okay, thank you.
Ali, I'll give you a chance to respond to that. He said that he wants to take the money away from the military. Is that something that you would agree with? Yeah. Yeah, do it. Okay. Okay, next question's for you, Alex. You recently said in a speech, you recently said in a speech, Alex, that although you agree with a couple parts of your fellow Chinese running mate Ivy's illegal immigration plans, the entirety of the idea is, and I quote, really rude and severe. Explain your thoughts on the comment you made. Yeah, I think that uh, that bill is kind of arbitrary because uh, it says um, we need to double the guard the borders from our military. But I have a question: Where are those? Uh, where are the armies come from? Or even though you uh, you may call them bash. Do, do they have? Do they need the rest? Do, do they have a? a do they need to have uh, have a rest? Or you are you gonna just take them from the uh, Iraq or Afghanistan to the border, the guard or how border? Okay, so Ivy, he's asking you. Your plan is to double the amount mm -hmm. of people that we have securing the border. Where are those people coming from? Yes, because I think. Now we have uh, many American forces that are fighting in other places in this world. Like, they are um, <coughs> helping other countries fighting in another country, but actually it's not our business because they have their uh, own uh, armies to fight with uh, each other. And uh, so I think comparing with that thing, it's more important to bring them back into our country to help our country to improve our economy. And uh, uh, just now I said uh, about the double of our forces, I think. And uh, uh, he said if they want to rest. But I think, you know, um, the illegal immigrants, they are not fighting to come into this country. Most of them are just trying to come in, in, this, to come, uh, in this country in a secret way. And uh, they don't want they don't want to get caught, so uh, they don't want to fight, which means uh, we won't have a lot of wars between uh, our country and and those illegal immigrants. And uh, they are just people. They are not like a war because uh, they don't have the uh, armies to fight. They just want to get into this country. And also, if they want to rest, we can like. Um, give those um, soldiers turns by turns to take a rest and to work. Um, they don't have to work all the time. Yeah. Thank you, Ivy. All right, next question's for Anna. You said in a speech last week that you do not agree with Alex's plans for offering free health care to any families making less than 50000 a year. In fact, you were quoted as saying it absolutely makes no sense. <laughs> Why do you think it's such a big mistake? Uh, well, in my opinion, uh, it's a big mistake because there are more than 50% of our population live on under 46,000 a year. So that means Alex will provide over 50% of population free health care. Where does the money come from? And he had just said that we will cut out from defense. But now, as you do uh, already know that, we have the strongest military in the world, and we can protect our our citizens. We can protect. We can help keep peace for the world. So, if we can cut our defense, what if the other country attack us? When when you uh, take the money to protect our country, will you uh, take away their free health care again? Alex, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that. <laughs> basically, Alex, basically what she's saying is that she doesn't agree with your policy because if we're going to take that money out of our defense, we will no longer be the strongest nation in the world. Uh, you know, uh, as I said before, we, we have spent about seven trillion, which is six times time, um, more than China, and uh, it's even more than uh, the total, the, the total of the the other four country, the most uh, powerful country in the world. So, how about we just take about one mil, uh, one trillion to uh, take care of health care? It doesn't uh, I mean, 
it's not a big deal for you. Uh, I, I mean, it's not gonna uh, decrease or cut up so much of our defense. Okay, and Anna, what was your last question you said? I missed that, do you know? Uh, I, I About taking health care away if, from someone? If he takes money of the defense, if other country can take away the defense, get again. Yeah, as I said before, I, we still have six trillion. But how could the other countries uh, with one trillion dollars, uh, how could that um, in the value of uh, weapons to attack us, uh, for, to attack us uh, with our six trillion dollars of weapons. Okay, thank you, Alex. Thank you.